Hi everyone, and welcome to another array processing video. The goal of this video is to derive the beam pattern of a narrowband conventional beamformer that has uniform weights. A narrowband beamformer takes narrowband data from the array stored in some vector x and processes it with a spatial filter defined by a weight vector w and computes the output as w Hermitian x. And remember that the beam pattern is simply the spatial filter frequency response. It tells us how the spatial filter responds to an input coming in at a certain angle. So we're going to look at the beam pattern for a uniform line array oriented along the z-axis. And you recall that the beam pattern is defined as a function of um, the wave number, in this case the vertical wave number kz. So we have b of kz, and it's equal to the weight vector Hermitian times a narrowband replica vector. So the narrowband replica vector characterizes a pure plane wave signal with uh, wave number kz arriving along the array. So if we assume uniform weights, then we're assuming that the w vector is simply a vector, an endpoint vector of all ones, assuming we have n sensors in our array, and then we have a normalization factor of 1 over n uh, out front, and that's simply going to guarantee us unity gain in our desired look direction. So to compute the beam pattern, all we have to do is um, get, take the inner product between the weight vector and a narrowband replica vector. So our narrowband replica for a ULA with n sensors, so we're assuming our array is oriented along the z-axis, and just for convenience I'm assuming that the n sensors start with a sensor at 0 meters, and then they're spaced out d meters because it's uniform line array, so it's uniform spacing with sensor spacing of d, and that goes all the way up to n minus 1 times d is, is the, the sensor farthest away from uh, the first sensor. So our replica vector v of kz is defined simply as our complex exponential. Um, so it's e to the minus j kz um, times z, a vector z, where z simply is the sensor locations. So if we compute that, we get for our uh, first sensor or zeroth sensor, we could call it, we get e to the minus j kz times 0 in the first slot, then e to the minus j kz times d in the second, on down to e to the minus j kz d times n minus 1. So that's our narrowband replica vector. So now all we have to do is compute the inner product of w Hermitian v of kz. And remember, all of the w's are equal to 1 over n, right, because we had that uniform weighting. So that inner product is simply going to be the sum from n equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 over n e to the minus j kz d times little n, where little n is the sensor index that goes from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, so this is the summation that we're trying to compute uh, to get our beam pattern. It's uh, pulled the 1 over n out front, and then we're just summing up a bunch of complex exponentials. Well, this sum over complex exponentials, if you'll recall, is simply a geometric series, um, and we have a convenient formula available to us um, that we use all the time in digital signal processing um, for the f sum of a finite sum of a geometric. So we can sum from n1 to n2 of a to the n, where a is a comp generic complex number, and that's what the summation is equal to, right? n1 and n2 are finite integers, any finite integers. Okay, so I've used that finite sum of a geometric series over here to get the beam pattern, all right? So I have the beam pattern in this form just using this formula. Now what I want to do is simplify this a little bit, and I can do that um, by pulling an exponential factor out of the top and out of the bottom. And so I can do that as follows. So I'm going to pull e to the minus j kz d n over 2. That's the exponential I'm going to pull out of the top, and e to the minus j kz d over 2 out of the bottom. 
And that's going to leave me with e to the plus j kz d n over 2 minus e to the minus j kz d n over 2 on top. And similarly on the bottom, it'll leave me e to the plus j kz d over 2 minus e to the minus j kz d over 2. Now it might look like I've complicated things more, but what it turns out, this term here looks basic. First of all, if I multiply back through, I get this formula. But I've simplified things a bit because this looks essentially like a sine, and this looks like a sine. And so I can convert this into sine over sine. So what I'm left with is 1 over n e to the minus j kzd n minus 1 over 2. That's um, putting these two together. And then I end up with sine of kz d n over 2 over sine of kz d over 2. And if you've worked at all with digital signal processing before, you recognize this as the discrete version of the sync function. Okay, so it has some useful properties um, that we can uh, apply to get an, an easy uh, plot of the magnitude. This won't affect the magnitude at all, it affects the phase. Um, this is just a normalization factor. Again, this phase factor is a consequence of where I assumed uh, my first sensor was. Okay, so I assumed my first sensor was at zero. If I'd assumed my first sensor was somewhere else, I would get a different phase factor here. Now what I want to focus on is, if I want to do an easy plot of this, what does the magnitude look like? So this is the magnitude, all the terms that contribute to the magnitude. And for my sketch down here, I've assumed that big N is equal to 5, okay? And so what I want to do, I've sketched what this discrete sink will look like for that. Um, and first, I'm going to make a couple of comments. Um, one, I can show, using L'Hopital's rule, um, at kz equals 0, at kz equals 0, this is going to be equal to 1. So I have a magnitude here of 1. So b of 0 is equal to 1. I show that using L'Hopital's rule. Um, and that's, that's good to know. So then the question is, so always good to label the peaks. So I get a peak there, um, and then I want to see where the zero crossings are. Well, the zero crossings occur whenever sine goes to zero on top. So that happens whenever the argument here, kz d n over 2, is a multiple of pi. So I can rearrange this formula and see that it goes to zero at 2 pi l over d n. Okay, l is just an integer. L is just an integer, right? Any value of l um, will uh, yield a zero crossing. So this says that the first zero crossing is at 2 pi over dn. So this is 2 pi over um, dn. Um, so 2 pi over d times 5 in this case. And then the next zero crossing, um, sorry, uh, <coughs> yeah, um, the next zero crossing uh, will be at 4 pi over 5d, and then 6 pi over 5d. Again, it's 5 because I've assumed that I'm, I have 5 sensors. And then the, the next zero crossing is at 8 pi over 5d, and then we have 10 pi over 5d. But 10 pi um, over 5d is really 2 pi over d, okay? Now I know this is a discrete sink, and so I have a discrete sink. I have to get copies every 2 pi over d of this. And that's because I'm dealing with a sampled signal. Um, the sampling period is d, 
uh, because that's the spacing between those sensors. And so I know that my discrete frequency response has to repeat every 2 pi over um, the sample period, um, which is 2 pi over d. So I get a copy at 2 pi over d, and you can see the denominator here will go to zero again at 2 pi over d, um, and thus it has to be equal to what it is at zero. So this will be minus 2 pi over 5d minus 4 pi over 5d on out. This will be minus 2 pi over d. And um, again, this is a discrete sink, so um, these copies continue, uh, continue forever. Okay, um, so we have this, um, and I want to label a couple of points on here. This is the main lobe. These are the side lobes. And then these copies, right, we could just call them copies, but in array processing we call them grading lobes. And we'll talk more about what grading lobes mean in a future video. Okay, so those are the key points uh, labeled along here. Uh, we can tell a couple of things. We know for sure that the width of this main lobe is a function. The width of the main lobe is clearly a function of um, the aperture of the array, which is a function of n times d, right? So that dn is related to the aperture of the array. So as the array gets bigger, because we have, say, more sensors, n gets larger, then this main lobe gets uh, narrower. Okay, now you know how to derive the beam pattern for a uniformly weighted um, conventional uh, line array um, and how to plot the magnitude of that beam pattern, um, and including labeling all the, the key points, including these zero crossings um, and where the peaks and the grading lobes occur. So um, that concludes this video. Um, you can take a look at the YouTube site for other videos related to um, conventional beamformers. Thanks for watching.